What's up, everyone? It's Aslam Dutoy. If you're watching this on my YouTube channel, make sure to subscribe below. If you're watching it on any of my other social media platforms, click follow, subscribe, or friend request me if you're watching this on my personal profile. Uh, my name is Aslam Dutoy. To those of you who don't know me, uh, and uh, you know, you might be seeing this on the Nine to Five Millionaire page as well. Make sure you're following the page and make sure you share this content with anyone who you believe will find it helpful. So guys, uh, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I'm on this mission. I'm on this journey to, uh, you know, teach people different ways of making money online. Now they understand there isn't one way. There isn't only one way of making money online. Uh, you know, you could get into something like network marketing where you build a distribution channel online and, uh, you know, throughout the world and you build depth through that business. Uh, you know, alternative number two is maybe where you get some involved in something like e-commerce you know, and you sell stuff on places like Amazon or Shopify, you know, uh, drop shipping, you know, you get products from overseas and then you get it sent uh, to another part of the world and you basically earn money from that. You know, then we could look at something like, uh, let's call it affiliate marketing, where you take someone else's product, you really, you get good at promoting, you know, yourself and that, and that other product and you then earn a commission from doing that, Okay. But then there are other methods of making money. And one such method is YouTube. Now, when you speak about YouTube, most people think about dog, cat, uh, dog and cat videos. Okay, they watch the cat jumping over the boxes or whatever the case is. And, uh, you know, YouTube is just like this binge social media channel that people don't really know how to use. But little do they know, you know, YouTube is actually the second biggest search engine on the internet right after Google, okay? Google is the biggest search engine. So YouTube's got billions and billions of users. People spend thousands and thousands of hours on there every day, okay? Mostly watching mindless information, more often than not, just for entertainment. But did you know you can also make money from YouTube? And that is what this, uh, you know, this whole video and interview is going to, uh, you know, be about today. So I'm doing this little introduction so that you understand, you know, where this fits in. And, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't know this, uh, but I've got a good friend of mine on this call today. Her name's Danica. And, uh, you know, uh, Danica is someone that I've known for, it's probably uh, five to six years now. And uh, I only found out very recently that she's been making money off YouTube. So the two of us like got together and, uh, you know, I knew a few things and I taught her a few things and she showed me how to do things on YouTube. And to give you the gist of this, to show you the results, uh, about a month and a half, maybe two months ago, you know, uh, my YouTube channel literally had about under 50 people. I think I must have had about 30 subscribers on my YouTube channel. And as we were going through the information, uh, you know, between myself and Danica, she's been helping me, you know, get the YouTube channel up because I realized that it's a very good funnel for the businesses that I run. And a month and a half later, the, the channel's up to over a thousand subscribers, meaning that it is now monetized. Uh, I wasn't sure how to monetize the channel. And now I know there are two different ways of me monetizing my, my YouTube channel. Maybe there's a few more that she hasn't told me about, but that's what the purpose of this meeting <laughs> is. Okay. So there are various ways to monetize YouTube and I wanted to delve in. So understand that this is not a YouTube training video that we're going to be doing today. This is more an introduction, a very introductory sort of video. We'll probably do a follow-up video, uh, you know, in terms of actual training. This is just to make you aware that there are ways to make money off YouTube. And the beauty of doing it on YouTube or any, uh, you know, video sort of channel is when you create content or when you have content that belongs to you or you have the rights to that content, you could literally turn that content into money-making babies for yourself online. And it doesn't matter whether people see it today or they could see it five years from now and you could still end up making money from that. Now, to me, that is passive income, and that is exactly what I'm interested in, and that is why I have an interest in learning more about YouTube. So I thought I'm going to bring Danica on, and she's going to share her journey. Uh, obviously, she wasn't born with this YouTube skill. You know, she had to go out and learn it and practice and fail, 
Uh, and you know, today she's coaching other people on how to make use of YouTube and to monetize the platform. Okay, Danica, can you still hear me? I know she's all the way in Dubai, guys. So you must understand sometimes the audio might be going off. The connection is a bit unstable, but yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome, awesome. Danica, how are you doing today? I'm good, and how are you, Aslam? I'm great, thanks. Uh, so our audio has been a bit of a challenge, guys. I will try to uh, smooth it out and edit it, you know, as uh, you know, once I do the editing on this video. Uh, so hopefully by the time you guys get it, uh, we, we're giving you a clean, crisp copy. So Danica, tell me, you know, before we get into this, maybe let's give the viewers a bit of background about you. Obviously, you live in Dubai right now. Uh, you were obviously not originally from Dubai. So maybe give us some background about Danica, where she comes from, and just your little story, your introduction. How I wish I was originally from Dubai. <laughs> it would have been great. <laughs> so I am originally from South Africa. Um, I was born in South Africa um, to... I think I was born to um, two completely different people. Like my mom is half Zulu and my dad is colored. So like there is a whole mixed concoction there. Um, I was raised in Midrand, okay. um, Robbridge. Uh, it's like a little small colored community in Midrand around there. Um, I think I graduated high school 2005. I'm really old, yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I mean, I, when I graduated high school, I didn't even know what I was going to do. I just went into um, accounting because I thought that that was like the play, the way that I needed to go. Because, I mean, obviously, when we grew up, the one thing that you needed to do, you needed to secure a job, right? Okay. So, accounting was one of those jobs that would be everlasting. So, when every company needs like clear creditors, um, accountants, creditors, clerks, all of that. So I went in and I studied accounting, okay. which I hated. I hated it because it was a desk job and I wanted to run around and do what I needed to do. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, I think my online marketing, I started in 2015. Okay. Um, I started with you, actually. Yeah. So <laughs> I didn't know much. Like you were the one that gave me all the insights. I started with you with network marketing, and um, that's where I started um, learning. And yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So you got in around 2015, and I, and I remember now because I got into network marketing around 2014, and uh, guys, I'll never forget this. Uh, you know, this is the beauty of network marketing. Uh, I remember signing up someone that I'd worked with at a bank. And this person uh, then introduced me to someone else who they worked with. Uh, I think uh, he introduced me to a guy uh, called Garth. And, you know, from the, uh, this guy Garth introduced me to uh, someone called Ryan. And then Ryan brought in, uh, you know, a few other guys. And along that line of people that had come in, you know, uh, Danica came in through the system. So she was like, uh, you know, like a fifth generation member in my network marketing business at the time. And I never, I'll never forget getting on a call. I even remember exactly where I was sitting. I had just finished a, we were used to do a lot of presentations back then, you know, where we would meet people in coffee shops. And I was sitting at a McDonald's. I had just walked out from a McDonald's in Johannesburg. I had just finished uh, doing a presentation. And uh, this guy told me, the guy told me, listen, I've got this lady, Danica. Danica came in through a guy called Angelo, actually. Uh, yeah. I remember. And, yeah. uh, you know, they got me on this call with Danica and I was doing this three-way call. And there's only one thing I remember about her, her personality. She was just super excited about what she was getting involved in and her enthusiasm was just infectious. And Mind you, I didn't even know what I was getting into. She didn't even know. She, you know, uh, one of our mentors used to always just say, pay attention, get excited, never quit. She was beyond excited. Like she was the definition <laughs> of excited, right? And you can still see that she was just full of smiles and just a happy-go-lucky person. 
And, uh, you know, I started to get to know her and we started building the business and I started working with her a lot more closely. And that's how we became, uh, you know, fairly uh, close friends. And we started building the business in that way. Uh, and as, you know, as life would have it, things moved on. Uh, you know, Danica got married and uh, uh, her marriage then led her on to Dubai. But uh, I want to I wanna touch on what happened in 2015. So, you know, you obviously were building the business with us at the time in the company that we were in. Uh, but in the background, which you never ever mentioned to me or anyone else for that matter, you were obviously delving into some things online, which seems to be uh, I don't know if it was YouTube at the time, but let us know what you got involved in when you started going online. Because to me, uh, network marketing, especially the way we were doing it back then, was far from being online. We were like in coffee shops and living rooms and hotels. That's how we were building the yeah. business five years ago. Yeah. You know, so maybe I mean, some background on that. I mean, um, okay, so before i think when we when we started um when we started with network marketing or when i started when i bought into your um vision with the other business we actually i i was excited very excited but i had no idea what we were going to do but i was purely excited because i saw so many people making it happen right doing it for themselves and i had businesses traditional businesses that I was running um, in South Africa that just wasn't making it, right? So I, we had to, I had to steer somewhere else. So my husband at the time was my boyfriend and um, he, he told me, he taught me a lot about the online um, world, right? Although I didn't trust it or anything like that, what I had to do is I had to go and research on how to take business online. So I tried to actually take my traditional business online first, right. right? And that just didn't work because I mean, construction, you really can't take online, right? <laughs> right? So there was like traditional businesses that I was trying to take online and it just, it, it failed miserably. Okay. Um, I think eventually when we got to Dubai, like we got married and after we got married, four months after we got married, we decided to move to Dubai. And he was actually headhunted and we moved to Dubai. And when we got here, there were so many rules and regulations on how to start a business because the first thing I wanted to do was start a traditional business. And Wesley was all for it. He's like, okay, let's try and see. But it was going to cost us an arm and a leg. I mean, guys, we just got married. Like we just spend so much money on a wedding because South African weddings are not like cheap. It's like these elaborate stuff that you just had to do. So, so I don't mean to be rude. Have I don't that mean... much funds to be yeah. putting into a traditional business. And hello. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I don't mean I don't mean to be rude. I, I, I but I, I wanna. I just I just wanna pause you uh, for a moment you are, because I love what I. What I would like the what I would like the viewer. Okay, guys. So it seems like we're having. Remember, I'm in South Africa. Danica is all the way in Dubai as I'm doing this interview. So there might be a bit of a a, a, a delay in my audio getting to her side of the of the world. It's probably just the internet. Uh, but Danica, what I what I want to just find out. I, I just want to delve into what you tried while you were still in South Africa. Maybe tell us some of the things you tried. Okay. I know that there there are people who run traditional businesses that are trying to do the, the you know, you know or take it online, so to speak, yeah. and they're failing. And I mean, there is a way to take traditional business uh, online, but, oh, yes. you know, they, let, obviously, we, you know, this is not the reason for the, for the interview today, but maybe let's just get into some of what you tried, even though it didn't work, let's get into some of what you actually tried, because maybe there's someone out there doing the same thing, and I just want to... Uh, kind of, you know, get the information out so that they can see maybe they're doing the right thing. Maybe they're on the different path. Maybe they're actually doing it the right way. So we, so um, I tried to do, um, because we were in a, con we were in construction. So we were doing construction, um, mostly um, with smaller firms trying to get these tenders that was going on people right. to see it and for us to like literally just i don't know how to explain it other than rank our 
website, like for it to get to Google's first page when people actually search for it. And Awesome, everyone. So there was a bit of a cut in the, the, the video. So wherever you're watching this from, it's probably just, you know, attached on to the first part of the video. And Danica was explaining to us how she was trying to do her construction company online, uh, trying to get it ranked on the first page of Google. Uh, Danica, if you can continue with that story, uh, you know, just explaining to everyone how you were trying to take your traditional business online. Yeah, so basically what I, uh, what the only thing that we were trying to do is like with all businesses, you need sales, right? So we were a small company that was trying to get more sales and was trying to basically get more um, exposure in order for us to get more business in. And because, um, because of the construction side in South Africa, it's already a saturated market. Um, it was difficult for us as a small entity to get into such a big saturated market. So um, putting getting it online was one of the first things that we decided, okay, let's try and do this because it is a very traditional business, because it is a, a, a business that not all construction companies would want to go online. Let's try and do this. Let's try and, let's try and get the construction online. It did not work because the majority of the people in, in construction at the, that time trusted the people that they were already working with. And going online um, just made that people had to learn something new. And not everybody was open to that at the time. Okay. So okay. that failed. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So you tried and obviously it, uh, it basically failed. Okay. Perfect. So then, right. then fast forward, you basically got married. And, I, and I'll never forget it. You invited me to your wedding. And it was on a Friday. And I, I know I couldn't make it at the time, but I, I, I yes. just don't remember in brief. And I, I, I apologize. I don't apologize back then. But uh, I remember I just started like a new Whatever. <laughs> you know, she's never going to forgive me. <laughs> and I was like, why is she having this wedding on a Friday? <laughs> you know, uh, but anyhow, I remember Danica got married. And then not long afterwards, uh, she moved over to Dubai. Uh, so tell us, you got over to Dubai, like you were mentioning earlier, and then you tried starting a traditional business, but obviously it was very expensive, which, um, which is basically not just in Dubai, but all over the world. Starting a, and this is why I'm so pro digital online businesses versus traditional business, because traditional business by its nature is expensive to set up. It's got very high startup costs. You know, so maybe speak speak about that, the things you you, you tried when you got to Dubai. So um, when, we, when we got to Dubai, to Dubai um, I was still in the business that we were doing, um, you and I, and that Angela got me into, right? So we were still doing it. So uh, because Danica, of the different laws and... Your audio is just a bit scratchy. Uh, I don't know, maybe we should just try... I don't know, if Yours you... as well. Yeah, I'm going to try taking my earphones in and out. Uh, can you speak on your side? So, guys, this is technology. This is how technology goes when you're trying to do things online, unfortunately. Okay, it's so scratchy. Do I sound better now? Okay. Uh, how do I sound to you now? Can you speak and I'll test my, my audio? You're still scratchy, like you've been scratchy. <laughs> oh man, I'm I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. You sound uh, you sound a lot better though. Okay, continue. Go for it. Okay. Okay. Continue. Go for it. Okay. So, um, when when we decided to come to Dubai, when we came to Dubai, um, we were looking into a traditional business. What was the one? One one of the businesses was actually a cleaning company. So um, because I got so frustrated with the um, the level of cleaning that the people do here or that the companies do here, um, and coming from South Africa, like you know, like we we clean everything must shine. Like when you walk past something, you 
put your finger over something, there must be no dust, right? So I come from that old traditional, you know, cleaning way. You got to go on your, on your knees and scrub the floors. So it, it's different here because we're in a different country. So things are different. Things will definitely be different. So the one thing that I wanted to bring in to make my life easier is a cleaning company getting people from SA that are looking for jobs, kind of bring them in and um, get them, teach them on how to clean the area, the people's houses here. So I actually um, looked into it. I did extensive research, research as to how to start it. Um, and that was going to cost me about... I don't know how much it is in rents, but it's gonna. It was gonna cost me about thirty thousand dirhams wow. to just get the paperwork sorted, and um, that is excluding getting visas for the visas for the people that I need to work for me for my employees. That is excluding my own visa, and that was obviously excluding my rent that I had to pay for the company premises every single month because here you cannot do business out of your house. You have to, if you have a company visa, you have to have a company premises. Yeah. So um, that was going to cost me an extra 5,000 a month. Wow. Um, so all in all, that was going to cost me about 35,000 just for the first month. To start off with no cleaners, I would still have to go and clean the people's toilets. <laughs> like I would still have to go and clean. You know, I don't have an employee as yet because I didn't pay for the visa because that would cost me another five to six thousand dirhams. So it was gonna cost me quite a bit to just get a cleaning company off the ground. And I was like, this is not gonna work for me. That's it was too expensive. We just paid for a wedding. I mean, really, like. We don't have we didn't have that kind of money okay. so that was one of the things that we tried and it didn't work okay okay cool so cleaning company option doesn't work okay great what was the next step what did you try next so the next step for me was basically i needed to educate myself so the biggest thing that i learned was that i had no education i had like and not, i know don't mean traditional education i mean like i had no online education i had no education as to i want to make do a business i want to make a business work but i had no idea as to how to make it work in um the way the world is currently working because at that point when we got here everything started going online websites were already a thing um but people started doing blogs people started doing a lot of youtube people started doing um facebook ads and stuff and i had no idea that those things can actually benefit you in a business sense so i had to educate myself i had to buy information i had to buy courses i had to um, pay people to teach me things that i thought i knew of which i didn't um i was educated <laughs> brought down very quickly on the stuff that i thought i knew <laughs> and i didn't know I, I had no idea as to what online marketing was actually about because i did um online marketing with you and with the company that we were, were that we were with the information that i took from there i just wanted to implement it in my traditional business bringing it online and that didn't work because that initially became spamming so facebook and youtube and instagram don't like that they don't like spamming and i was spamming a whole bunch of family members a whole bunch of friends i was just spamming all around you know my facebook was full of do you want to buy this do you want to get this do you you know like i'm promoting this and that wasn't what was it wasn't working so I had to educate myself. I had to buy courses. I had to make sure that um, it took me a year of just learning um, okay. how things work on the online. Um, it took me um, about a year of just 
sitting and listening to online audio, sitting and listening to what people are doing, researching YouTube, um, researching things that I think I might be good at, finding out what it is that I am good at, um, and not just what I think people want me to be good at. You know what I mean? So like, sure. as I said in the beginning, accounting was something that I had to do because I had to maintain a job, mm. right? Now, there, is, there was no reason for me to do accounting. So what is it that I'm good at? What is it that my, what is my passion? So I had to figure out my passion and then learn and steer myself to like to that particular passion in order for me to make money online with my passion so that it's easy for me to make the money because I enjoy what I'm doing. You know, you're touching on, uh, you're touching on so many uh, important points, you know, one being uh, traditional formal education and the lack that, uh, that it, you know, that's actually prevalent and prevalent, uh, you know, in this traditional education that we force our mm. kids to get and that, that we were forced to get. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people think, well, now that I've got a degree or I've got this accounting course or, you know, uh, I'm set for life. And all that teaches you is to how to uh, is how to work for someone else, not even how to run your, your own right. business. Uh, you know, so I think yeah. let's speak about maybe the courses. Just maybe if, I don't know if you can recall. I know maybe it's a few years back. But do you recall maybe the first uh, f the first or second courses that you bought? You know what they were if you can uh, trace that back, far back so initially i just to be honest i just like if you don't want to spend money like of which i didn't want to i mean it's online like people scam you so i didn't want to spend money so i went on youtube and i googled like for weeks on end like how to make money online what to do you know like for weeks on end i did that and then after a while, I started getting familiar with certain um, platforms, um, such as um, MLSP. I actually went on to MLSP. I paid for MLSP's courses, and they're pretty good, right? Um, there is also this one particular guy that um, I use, um, Jordan. He as his courses are simple, straight to the point of which I had to, which I purchased. Um, and from MLSP's course, yes, there was a lot of information that I got from there. I took Jordan's course and I started implementing whatever he taught me. So I think those are two of the two courses that really made like a massive difference in my online career. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And, uh, was was this the, the turning point where you decided to do things on YouTube or is this still prior YouTube now? No, this is actually this is actually um turning point because this is the turning point. When I bought Jordan's course, it was the turning point for me because I decided like I need to do something. I need to get myself involved with something. I need to start doing something to give myself purpose. Because I mean, as you know, I don't like have to work. I don't work in Dubai. Like I don't work. <laughs> yeah, you work, you work from home. Like, you work from home. And for those of you that are watching, yes, I mean, I, like, uh, I don't, I've never gone to, since, I, since I've been married, I've never gone to a traditional uh, job. So, you know what I mean? Yes. So I needed, but I needed to still fulfill myself in some ways, right? So I needed to still do something for myself because I've always been that person that wants to do things for herself. So the turning point was when I got tired of literally just reading up on all this information that I got and seeing people actually doing it and seeing people making it. And I'm like, I could have been doing that for the past two years that I've been sitting and reading, getting all this information. It didn't help me much because I didn't implement it. So I had to get to the implementation phase. So it doesn't help you getting all this information, but you're not implementing it. So I had to get my turning point was when I realized that my friend is making money from the same course that I'm doing and I'm not doing anything. <laughs> so that was my turning point. And then I turned and I started doing YouTube. 
because Jordan Jordan's course that I bought was purely YouTube. And when I started on YouTube, I think I failed quite a few times. But eventually when I got it right, it started happening. Okay. So just for the viewers, uh, Danica has mentioned a few things. And, I'm, uh, uh, you know, for those of you, uh, you know, that want to know more about things like MLSP, that's something that... Uh, you know, I utilize very extensively and uh, it's one of the systems that, that that's taught me, you know, how to do uh, online marketing, especially if you're a network marketer and you're trying to take your business online. And I know Danica uses it now again after I reintroduced it to her. So she's uh, finding yeah. that valuable. Uh, but uh, maybe just uh, uh, the Jordan course, do you remember what you paid for it? And the reason I want to touch on this is, you know, a lot of people we get because there's so much of free information and given there is a lot of information on YouTube, but it's like there's just too much of information. So where do you start? Because it's so easy to get lost in YouTube when you get there. It's like you go there and you want to learn how to make money online. And before you know it, you're watching a cat video and you don't even know how you got there because you just get lost in the maze of information. And uh, what I find is a lot of people that want to learn from YouTube Unless you're a really focused person, you need to pay for a course. You need to invest in yourself the same way like you're going to pay for a degree or a diploma in the traditional sense. You need to pay for courses in the online space if you want to learn how to do it. See, see the thing is with YouTube is that a lot of people do YouTube, but they're doing it in order to get monetized. They're doing it to, in order to get money and if you watch their videos and you watch their ads they're getting money they're only going to give you a snippet of information they're not giving you all the information you need so yes. the only way you're going to get all the information you need in order to actually make this online thing work for you is for you to purchase a course okay that is the unfortunate reality about youtube because i mean i can go and put on a core a a, 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 a youtube video telling you that i've just made 500 dollars um in two hours and i can show you few steps on how to do it be rest assured i'm not showing you everything because i need you to come back and come and watch my video again and again and again and with you watching it all the time i get paid right okay so, which we're gonna get to which is important uh so what, what do you remember what you paid for that course when you bought that first course that much of it's like a hundred and hundred and forty seven okay that's you know what so it's not a lot of money right but it's still a lot of money because some people are hesitant okay. to spend ten dollars uh you know to get something online so 147 Correct. you made that first investment and i assume and look i'm not gonna hold you to this you know but since that time if you had to put a number out there, how much do you think you've invested in courses, learning? Everything? Oh, wow. Like my husband and I, Mr. and I were talking about this yesterday. Like we went through our numbers and like we spend over about seven to $8,000 wow. um, within, yeah, within a period of a year just on courses like random little courses not stuff that's giving me diplomas or degrees or anything like that but it's courses that like educate me so um roughly about yeah that much wow. i think eight thousand at the most for a year for, for, for the past year and a half okay and here's oh. the here's the important question has it turned into money for you oh yes exactly right <laughs> so guys this is this is the this is the big thing that i want to that i always want to get across to people that you know you can go and spend now think about this you're doing this for let's say you're spending money for a year and a half and i'm you've made more money out of youtube than what you've spent on the courses correct 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 okay now that's one and a half years guys if you look at eight thousand dollars i don't know which country you're going to be from but i mean most of my uh, audience is in south africa so i mean eight thousand dollars right now you're looking at close to two hundred thousand rand some people spend that on a degree over a four-year period and remember in that four-year period that you're doing that degree how much money are you making zero zip nothing. okay you made nothing right so Take that now compared to someone that spent, in the case of Danica, that spent $8,000 in uh, courses on YouTube. 
okay but she's converted it into money this is why i'm saying that old school traditional education okay i'm not saying it has no value but i'm sorry to say it, it has no value in this space because you need to unlearn so many things it's not going to teach you if you because you are only good in your job as long as you're in a job but if you're out of a job how do you take that same information and translate it into income for yourself so danica now you, you spend the money on youtube uh you know the first course you get started maybe let's before you, you you know you get to where you were making some decent income tell us some of the struggles you had maybe you know learning uh, this youtube platform Whoa. <laughs> how much time do you have <laughs> give us a few i know look we're gonna do another follow-up we'll you know we'll get to a training but uh, maybe just give us some information i think with the struggles i think my, my major struggle was um overcoming my mentality um my mentality at the time was oh will this work like very doubtful like this is not gonna work i've tried this i've tried that this uh, like it's the same as everything else you know so i had to overcome my doubtful mentality i had to overcome the fact that um i believed that something was supposed to be a certain way in order for it to work right with youtube there is no certain way for it to work today the same thing that you, the thing that you did today might not work tomorrow and that is one thing that i had to learn very quickly with youtube I had to when i started it because i my first my very first channel i still have it i use it as a test channel so um that channel i used and i got it monetized within like a month or so and I was very excited. I ran to my husband and I'm like, yay, babe, this is actually, you know, like it's working. Like, you know, all these courses that we did, it's actually working. So with him, the minute he saw the $5, $5 in the account, he was like, um, oh, okay, so it's working, continue. So um, at that point, I was so excited that it's working. What I'm doing is working. And two days later, I wake up to an email saying that my account has been demonetized. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, what happened? Like, I did everything right. I, it, it was fine. Why did it get demonetized? But it was purely because I made one error on, on YouTube and they had to demonetize it. They had to remonetize it after a while. But the, th the, the one thing that I, had to sh that I had to overcome at that point was the fact that it took me four months to get back onto youtube and start posting Whoa. after it got demonetized whereas within that four months i lost most probably something like two to three thousand dollars Wow. okay not mentioning the education that i had bought in order to um in order for me to actually get to a point where this channel needed like to get to where this channel was right it was like a stepping stone it wasn't like the be all and end all it was just a stepping stone i had to continue and i didn't so i had to start all over again okay so, so that was one of the biggest mistakes i made okay okay cool so you get started on youtube you make five dollars and i think that five dollars is important because that five dollars both believe i'll never forget the first time when i got into network marketing in 2014 when i made my first 20 dollars you must understand this was 20 dollars that i did not have to get from my job and uh, you know so many yeah. people that don't that choose not to get involved for example in network marketing you know that they, they can't understand why you know everyone calls it the pyramid scheme and you know that that's how you know uh, and that's for the ignorance you know a lot of people don't understand you know how it works and what it's about and uh, that's because of the traditional education system and the naysayers out there but when i made that first 20 dollars, it showed me the power of what was possible and i think for you that was the same thing five dollars showed you that I if i can make five i can make more correct and i think I think when that five came in and I showed Wesley the five, right? And 
it got demonetized and that five was taken away. It was like my dream was taken away. At that point, I was like, ah, crumbling. But what I forgot was that um, I had a vision. So my vision crumbled with them taking that away. So somehow I had to rebuild my vision. So I just had to continue going, of which I did it at that point. But when I realized that, I haven't made that mistake ever since. So I think it was a good mistake to make at that point. Yeah, you got to make, make mistakes. You know, you have to make mistakes. If you don't make the mistakes, you're not going to learn. Like, this is the one thing that I tell some of my students. I'm like, guys, if you're not going to make the mistakes, you can't go back and tell people, like, this is what I've tried. This is what I've done. I mean, and this is, this is what works for me and this is what doesn't work for me. Or this is what works on YouTube and this is what doesn't work for you. Unless you're educated, the people that you're buying um, courses from, they all gone through mistakes. They've all did this and they've gone through hurdles in order to get where they are at. It didn't just happen one day when they woke up and they're like, wow, YouTube works for me. They yeah. had to go through so much of hurdles, so much of pain, so much of mental um, preparation in order for them to actually get to the point where they are today. There's pop. There's been bottles in the in the road for them. Just because you see where they are at doesn't mean that that's where they started. Okay. So awesome. yeah, I like that. Okay, I think maybe let's get into let's get into how people can actually make money on YouTube. You know, so uh, you know we've spoken about you, you know your journey, and uh, you know we will follow this up with another video, and we'll get more and more into your story. Uh, you know, I don't want the interview to be, it could be three hours long because there's so much of valuable information that you could share with some of the experiences that you that you have. Uh, but maybe, uh, you know, give us some information in terms of people look at YouTube and all they see is this entertainment website with tons and millions yeah. and millions of videos. And they're like, okay, so how do I make money off YouTube? Because I know that some people think to make money off YouTube, I'm going to need to put my face there. And I'm an introvert. I don't want to put my face on, uh, you know, on video, uh, you know, so how do I use this thing to, 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 to make money? Maybe speak about some of the ways, uh, just high level, you don't need to go into tons of detail. Uh, so if there's two ways or three ways, maybe just, you know, highlight each one, how people make money on there, just to give a broad idea of the, the channel itself. And maybe let's, let's even go beyond that. Let's even start a step before that. Maybe tell us what YouTube is you know, and uh, then work your way down from there in terms of how one can use it to make money. Okay. So YouTube is basically just a platform where people, um, where you can upload videos and people watch videos on it. It's like a, an, it's as we said, it's an entertainment platform. So a lot of people go onto it to be entertained. That's what they want to be. They want to watch cat videos. They want to watch people sitting and watching their dishes they want to laugh when they go onto youtube that's why people go onto youtube right um but then there are many other things that are like people like us go onto youtube for we want to go and get educated we want to go and get um information from youtube so youtube is an uh, an entertainment platform as well as an educational platform those are the two things that they actually thrive on Okay. So if in your videos, if you do make videos, those are the two things that you need to that you need to um, take into consideration when you do make videos on YouTube. It's to entertain people and to educate people. If you have those two things in your videos, your videos will thrive. Okay. Then um, how to basically start out with making um, money on YouTube? Obviously, you need to get your channel monetize this is the traditional youtube way so there's a few ways that you can make money on youtube one of it is to get your channel monetized is to get you to become a partner of youtube where they actually pay you to put ads onto your channel so if people go and watch your video and they watch let's say 30 seconds of the ad that's on your video you get paid for that okay um, a second way is where you can do affiliate links. So as I spoke about affiliate links earlier in the video, um, where you can actually take someone's um, product and link it to your bio 
and people can click on there and purchase your product or whatever it is you're selling and then that's one way where you can also make money right um one of the other ways that i personally love is to sell youtube channels like monetize youtube channels and sell those kind of things um because a lot of people are actually looking for those kind of products like they want you to monetize youtube channels so get channels monetized then you sell those that's another way where you can make money um you can also get promotional items on youtube where um let's say you actually i don't know is it called promotional items i'm not too sure um it's where people basically just uh, promote their products through you so you like that also happens when you're already a big youtube um person when you get to a point where you're bigger where people will actually be like okay this person does makeup videos let's give her makeup to to review and they get paid for that review okay right okay okay that's, so that's like a few of it. so that's four ways so let's just go is there you're going to give us five yeah the, uh, there's one more so you can have another one is where you can actually do like subscriptions so subscriptions is where you say a little for instance asla you do what um gym you gym a lot right so if people want to have like a gym membership if you get to a certain like 200 or whatever subscribers then you can um go and apply for subscription membership subscription so people start paying you for uh, a membership of your product or your gym membership of some sort so you give them that gym your gym routine or whatever it is that you currently want to put out there so there's a subscription that they're paying for your product so that's one of the other ways that you can make money on youtube so let's just let me just recap this right so number one uh you get your youtube channel monetized and uh, this is that whole idea of doing so uh, guys maybe you've seen these videos on youtube and uh, i'm talking about point number one now we you might find the top 10 holiday destinations in the world for 2020 for example well i don't think there's going to be many of those because 2020 people can't even travel <laughs> so you know let's just call it the top 10 holiday destinations for 2019 you've seen those videos it could be cars it could be uh, it could be anything top 10 hollywood houses you've probably seen those videos top 10 celebrities uh, you know and uh, as you watch these videos you see these ads coming up and uh, you basically get paid for each ad that basically plays in those videos right that's number one daddy okay, if i'm correct okay correct so uh, we're going to go through them, uh, you know, one by one. So on point number one, maybe if you can just tell people, I, I mean, I know now, now that I've gone, you know, and sat with you and we've gone through this, uh, maybe tell people, how do you get it monetized? What are the criteria to get a YouTube channel monetized? So the criteria to get your YouTube channel monetized is pretty simple. You have to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. So that just means that you have to have um 1000 people subscribing to your particular channel and then 1000 uh, 4000 watch hours i don't know how to explain that any better like that is what it is it's 4000 watch hours <laughs> okay <laughs> so those are the two is. main criteria you need 1000 subscribers yeah. and 4000 watch hours okay yes. and uh, guys this is exactly what Danica helped me with like i said you know i had about you know 30 40 subscribers i really wasn't paying any attention to youtube mainly because i i wasn't really understanding it and i was a bit lazy to create content all the time uh but that's one of the ways so you know uh, way number one is you you monetize the channel you need a thousand subscribers four thousand watch hours you then receive an email from youtube which i finally got to say you can now monetize this channel which means i can well <laughs> right so i can literally put ads onto my my videos and every time people watch those videos it's basically another uh, another revenue stream okay and then point number two okay was that the affiliate one that we mentioned i can't i can't remember right. 
that was the so. yeah, that was the affiliate one. Guys, if it's mixed up, we're gonna I promise you we'll cover all five. Okay, so point number two is where you promote affiliate links. So this is where you know uh, you might be part of a, a company or a platform that sells a product. Let's say they sell the product for a thousand dollars. And if you sell the product, they might give you, let's say, 10%. So you make a hundred dollars. So normally right. with these ones, you'll see the links in the video uh, profile or in the person's profile. You click on that, it takes you to sort of a sales page. And if you buy the product, the person who referred you to that page would basically receive a commission. So that's method number two, right? So that's that's pretty much affiliate yeah. marketing, right? Okay. And then uh, method uh, number three. Uh, do you recall what was that, Danica? So method number three was... Method number three? Yes. We had affiliate marketing. We had... <laughs> monetization. We had affiliate marketing. We had monetization. We had subscriptions. Subscriptions. Let's, care. let's, let's do the... So I think the third one was actually the promotions. So the promotions, I think this is more like influencer marketing, right? So influencer marketing okay. could be, uh, I'm looking at this here. So, I mean, I've got this gum sitting here on my desk, okay? So uh, the, the promotion is basically, and you see this, this is very popular on Instagram, where they might find someone that has 100,000 followers or 10,000 followers, and the company might be promoting their own gym supplement or gum or whatever the case is. And because you're an influencer and a lot of people follow you or watch your videos, companies might say, well, you know what? Every time you promote our product, we also going to pay you a portion. That's pretty much what yeah. that means, right? Promotional marketing, yes. influencer yes. marketing. So promotional marketing, yeah. Okay. Yes. So. Okay, so that's what's promotion. the other one? Okay, and then you had the subscription. We have monetizing, we have promotional marketing, we have um, the subscription based. Subscription based was basically just when you is you subscribing to like you subscribe to a gym membership, you subscribe to that particular person's channel. Um, that's it. And then the other one is selling monetized channels and selling. That's um, the one. Yes, the, so, so the selling of monetized channels, maybe, uh, you know, so when I look at uh, the possibilities of making money off YouTube, uh, what would you say, if you had to look at the five, what would you say is the easiest way for people to make money off YouTube from those five? I have my opinion. I want to hear your opinion. Oh, wow. My opinion, what worked for me? Selling. Selling monetized channels. So this is yeah, this is the equivalent selling. yeah this is the equivalent of finding a rundown property like I'm a, I'm a real estate person so this is the equivalent of finding a rundown property that no one wants sprucing it up a little bit okay and then selling right. it when it's looking nice right but you're doing it with online right. assets as opposed to uh, a, a real estate so this is online real yes. estate and it's a lot cheaper I'm assuming so maybe tell us a little bit oh, yes, about that. It is, a little, it is a lot cheaper. Um, well, you just go through the process of like the exact same way you monetize your channels. You go through the exact same product, pro, I mean process. The only thing is you then list it as at, uh, like you basically go in and be like, hey guys, whoever, if you know people that are in a group that does YouTube, you go into that group and you're like, hey guys, I've got a channel to sell. If you, um, it's this amount of money. I mean, I sell my channels for $300 um, um, at most, I think, $320. And you sell it and then halas. It takes about maybe a month for your channels to be monetized, depending on how good you are at getting it monetized. Then, yeah. Okay. I mean, if you sell five of those products a month. Well, and, and what, 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 what did you say is the profit margin? So, I mean, if you're selling them at like $300, uh, what would you say the cost is for the person, number one, to get the channel, uh, then get it monetized, and then sell? What would you say the profit margin is on that? It's about 200%. 
200%. Now, guys, I want you to think about that for a moment. Okay? If you had to take a piece of real estate and you had to basically renovate it, think about the amount of money. A lot of people want to get into property and they want to get into real estate, you know, and they want, because it, it sounds sexy, you know, to say that yeah. I'm a real estate developer. And people only see the sexiness of it versus the struggle that comes with it. It's, that's not an easy thing to do. And it's very capital yeah. intensive. And your return will be nowhere close to 200%. And you're talking to someone right now that loves real estate. So here you're making a 200% profit on flipping online real estate in the form of YouTube channels. Okay. So you could literally, if you decide that that is, and guys, uh, I think Danica will agree. Maybe just choose one or two of these. So obviously you need to know how to monetize right. the channel. Okay. And uh, Danica, I'm assuming, uh, yes. And here's a business model, guys. And this year you can see this is a very unrehearsed interview. You know, this is just raw and uh, uncut so to speak, right? But I mean, uh, you could literally, so if, if I came to you and I said, listen, I want to start selling YouTube channels. I just need you to help me get them and then monetize them for me, give it back to me. And then I'll, I'll go and do the rest and sell them. You, is that like a sort of a service that you could also offer yeah. people? Okay. Yes. All right, cool. Yes. And, and, and you know, because the, because yes. the amount of, because the amount of profit that's built in there is, is so lucrative, 200%, uh, you know, there's enough to go around. You know, everyone thinks that they need to know all these technical things and do it all on their own. Uh, for example, you don't need to know construction to get into the real estate flipping game. You know, you need right. to be able to find your deals, get someone else to come in and do the work, just manage them. I'm making it sound simpler than it really is, obviously. And uh, you sell the finished product. And it's pretty much the same, Correct. right, Danica? Yeah, pretty much the same. Pretty much okay. the same. I mean, you don't have to do the heavy lifting. I mean, a lot of online things, you don't have to do the heavy lifting. Um, someone else has already invented some sort of system that you can use in order for it to be used, or in order okay. for it to make your life easier. Yeah. So I know you have multiple income streams from YouTube itself. And would you say the most lucrative out of all of those is, is the selling, the buying and selling of the sites, of the YouTube channels? That is the most easiest. The easiest. Like that is the easiest. Um, YouTube videos, um, that's the most lucrative. I mean, you don't really, like, you know, you put in a bit of work into what you're doing and you put on some ads and you can make quite a bit of money on there. Okay, so you're saying the most lucrative is actually the first option, which was that monetized option we spoke about. Correct, getting your channel monetized and affiliate marketing. The affiliate marketing, however, you need to know how to market yourself and you need to know how to market the product. See, because because it's not your product, you don't really have um, that much control over what the person is selling. So you have to do extensive research on the product so that you don't sell nonsense, okay. right? Whereas with YouTube, you can go and post crazy videos and people will still like, comment, and subscribe. Okay, awesome. So there you have it, guys. Five ways to basically make money on YouTube. I'll probably put a caption or something over here where I would have went through everything. Uh, and, uh, you know, I would say choose one you know, and, uh, you know, start learning how to do that. Now, some people might be watching this and thinking, I don't even know how to open a YouTube channel or like, how do you get started? Is it very easy for someone to just get their own YouTube channel up and running? Yeah, yes. If you have your Gmail address, you have an email address, sorry. If you have an email address, um, like I prefer Gmail. It's easier that way. Um, and you create a Google account. From there, you can literally just click onto your create a channel right. on your settings, okay. and then okay. you create your channel. Okay. So, guys, obviously, you know, I'll, I'll, do a, I'll do another video with Danica where it will be more like a training where we'll possibly share our screen and she'll go through, you know, how you open your YouTube yeah. channel if it's your first one, uh, you know, if you have no idea how to do that. 
Uh, Danica, I think maybe what I want to just cover very quickly is when people get paid on YouTube, like how does the money actually come to them? So people are probably thinking, so where will I get paid? Uh, so how does that work? How does the, the actual payments work? So I personally prefer that they take that they send it to um, my PayPal. Okay. So you can, it, there's different streams of where you can get paid. Um, into YouTube obviously pays you on the 22nd of every month. Um, and it only pays you out once you have $100. So less than that, you cannot be paid out. But above that, you can um, withdraw your cash. Okay. So and is it cumulative? You can send money to your bank account or um, um, some cryptocurrency, I guess. I haven't tried that yet, but... Um, a bank account necessarily yes you can okay and uh tell me is it cumulative because you need a hundred dollars in your account so let's say you get on and you just got monetized and in your first month you made fifty dollars so you don't have enough to withdraw but does that fifty dollars carry over to the next month on the 22nd yes, yes, yes. okay unless okay. your channel gets demonetized okay. um that money is yours Okay, so it will just stay there until the, you reach a point where you have $100 and then you can withdraw the money out of your account. Yeah. Okay, awesome. That's awesome. from my experience, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, awesome. Uh, I think uh, maybe the second last thing I want to cover is some people might be thinking, okay, I get into YouTube, okay, I get my channel up and running or I get channels up and running, I choose my method and uh, you know, I bought courses and I'm doing this thing. Uh, what can I expect to make? And uh, obviously, guys, uh, just an income disclaimer. Uh, you know, uh, there are no guarantees of income, uh, you know, with, uh, with what yeah. we're speaking about. You know, your, what you make is going to be dependent on your own work ethic and your own discipline and commitment and consistency. So, but I want to just give people an idea, uh, you know, that some people probably make part-time income from YouTube and other people make full-time income. And what I want to ask Danica to do, Danica, what I want you to do is maybe touch on, you know, what it takes to make part-time income, what people, what you consider to be part-time income, you know, how much of effort they'll need to put in to get to that. And then for someone that wants to make full-time income, you know, what's the sort of commitment, uh, you know, they would have to be putting in and uh, what they can possibly expect. Obviously, there's no guarantees, but just in your experience. Okay, so for me, part-time income was very much, um, I put in like two to three hours a day and I would make like $500, $600 the end of the month, you know, with posting videos because I didn't really put as much effort into it. Um, but... Uh, when I started taking it serious and so I stopped, stopped like treating it like a hobby because then I started getting paid like a hobby. So I took it serious. I started um, putting in, yo, in the beginning, I put in quite a lot of hours. I put in like eight to nine hours a day um, starting from starting from the beginning so eight to nine hours uh sometimes 10 to 11 hours um that was in the beginning just to make sure that my channel is up and running and that people are seeing my content because i posted quite a bit of videos right um with that i i you could easily make 10k a month wow that's amazing that's amazing Okay, so obviously the amount you make is dependent on the effort you're going to put in, the hours you're going to put in. And, and I remember speaking the other day, and I mean, it was crazy. You were talking about, you know, putting up like eight videos a day and 10 videos a day, uh, you know, and uh, I mean, yeah. that takes work. That takes work. Oh. Right? I mean, that's not easy. Yeah. I mean, I, I like in the beginning, I still sometimes now I post like eight to nine videos a day like one video every hour you know and that is only for one channel so if you have multiple different channels for each channel you post eight videos a day that is that becomes quite um taxing so okay. it becomes quite a bit but 
the reward is good. Okay, and and, and that's I, you know, and that's what I'm what I'm what I'm uh, you know what I'm uh, very fond of you know is that uh, you know there's always going to be hard work. I think everyone's out there looking for the easiest way to become a millionaire, and it doesn't exist. You're gonna need to put in no. some time. You're gonna need to put in effort, and you need to focus. So. Guys, if YouTube is where you want to make the money, then you need to choose your channel, choose your poison, invest in yourself, learn the skill, and then work at it every single day until you become profitable. And ideally find a mentor, someone like Danica, that's been down the path, uh, you know, that can show you the ropes and show you where she made mistakes. You want to be getting that yeah. because it, it shortcuts your learning, your learning process. Uh, Danica, I think uh, what I also want to maybe just touch on is for people doing it part time, what would you say realistically, you know, if they want to see any sort of traction from YouTube, because some people might be watching this and maybe they work a full time job. They don't have like the eight hours a day or, you know, to you, what is like yeah. a part time uh, work ethic if you're going to be building it on the side? I think if you're going to be building it on a side, like just be consistent. Like if you, if you put out two videos a week, be consistent in putting those two videos out a week. Okay. Like if you put out videos every single Wednesday, once a week, be consistent in putting that one video out every Wednesday because your audience starts getting used to what you're putting out there, when you're putting it out there. And sometimes it might sound weird, it might sound weird, but people are waiting for you to post that video right. at that time right. so that they can see what you posted or that they can see what's happening in your life. You know, people like them. Uh, so, <laughs> okay, guys, so, African. Is, <laughs> <laughs> so they want to see, you know, they're waiting for you to post your content. So some of your subscribers will obviously, once you stop being consistent in what you're doing, um, people will stop watching your stuff. The more consistency you show within your channel, the more people will start. Uh, um, watching obviously when you're doing it part-time it will take you a little bit longer than the person that's doing it full-time or the person that is posting eight to ten videos a day people will then see um, their stuff more than they do yours but stay consistent because on the end of the day you're not running their journey you're running your own journey you want to create what you want to create you want to build your own um, income stream you want to make sure that you are successful in this um their journey is completely different from yours because you are doing it part-time so if you're doing something part-time if you know that you're going to be posting it at 10 every single wednesday continue posting it at 10 every single wednesday be consistent okay. that's the only thing that i would say okay and I, I, you know, one thing I didn't touch on, uh, maybe some people are thinking that they really need to be technical to do this. Uh, so, yeah, guys, here's, here's uh, the big revelation. Annika is like the superstar in IT. She understands everything about technical. Uh, I'm forgetting about the time she forgets to press the mute or unmute herself on Zoom and she gets stuck. So how technical do you need to be to make it on YouTube, Danica? You just need to have a a laptop or a, a a phone even. That's it. You don't need any technical skills or anything like that. I mean, really, I am, I, I think I'm po most fast. My husband calls me technologically declined. Like there is no way that I will ever have technological skills ever. So I don't, you don't have to know, you don't have to be. And then the editing of videos, uh, do you do your own editing? Because obviously YouTube videos look all fancy. Do you do your own editing on videos? In the beginning I did. In the beginning okay. I did. All eight of them, every single time I did. The bigger your channel gets, the more you can outsource. But um, in the beginning I would say do it so that you know from the ground up how much time and effort it takes for you to actually do your own videos so that when you do want to outsource that people don't take you for a ride i mean this one girl wanted to charge me 400 dollars per minute per video wow okay okay so, so that's... Um, yeah so start from the ground up do it yourself in the beginning that's what i would say 
edit your own videos in the beginning so that you know what it takes and what effort it, it, it takes to actually get it out there. And then when your channel is profitable enough, then you can outsource it, outsource okay. it need be. So uh, I think, uh, you know, I might have just skipped over something uh, very important because I think some people are still thinking they need to put their own faces onto these YouTube channels. So what you're speaking about when you're talking about loading eight videos a day, you're not even talking about videos you created yourself, right? Oh, no, you won't find my face on YouTube. <laughs> maybe one, maybe one video, maybe one video, but no, no, it's all, it's not, it's all faceless videos. We call them faceless videos where you actually don't have to put your own um, face, your face or anything like that onto the video. No one has to see you. If you are not someone that likes to be on video or on television or anything like that, you don't have to appear in any of your videos at all. So, so how do you get, uh, yeah. so maybe let's just touch on that very quickly. I know it's an in-depth uh, uh, discussion, but how do you get faceless videos? Where, do, where would people find them? Like what would they do to get those? You find them where you will be posting them. Okay, so you find it on you yeah. find it on YouTube, right? Correct. Right YouTube. Yeah. So, guys, yeah. just to put this in context for you, you'd find a channel, and I know there needs to be certain rights. So, they need the the person or the channel needs to allow shareability. What's it called? There's a name for it. It's called creative content. So, if you want to share um, videos, so you get these little um, what what are the videos called? Um, top ten videos. I actually have one of those, so a top 10 videos, right? To top 10 um, fastest cars in the world. There, If, for instance, I go onto Aslam channel and Aslam's channel says that, okay, I can create, I can take this content. At the bottom, it will say user rights. It will say creative content, um, creative content reuse allowed. Then you can take that video and reuse it. However, you have to edit it. You cannot just put it up there. You have to edit it. So there's a few things that you need to do on it in order for it to not be copy, to not have copyright strikes on it. There's a few things that you need to do in order for, for your channel not to be closed. Right. Okay. Okay. And that's obviously where the, where the training comes in. Okay. So that's one of the ways. So those are the videos we're speaking about, uh, guys. When Danica says load eight to ten videos a day. Uh, it simply means you're taking videos from other channels, uh, channels which obviously allow you to take the content. You edit those videos, you load it on your YouTube channel, eight to ten of those videos a day on the channel, and then you get ads running on those videos, right? It's as simple as that, basically. Yeah. And you get paid every time people watch the video when the ads play. As simple as that, right? Correct. Okay, okay. So that's what, guys, that's what Danica is referring to when she speaks about monetizing your channel with faceless videos. Okay, Danica, to, maybe to end off, and obviously we will do a follow-up to this, maybe your top three to five tips for someone that wants to start making money off YouTube uh, and they just don't know where to start. Like, I mean, you know, they, they, they want to do it, but they, they don't know where to start. So your top three to five tips for that person. So for someone that doesn't know where to start uh, for advice for beginners, basically, I would say set your expectations. Um, you're not going to make a million within the next year. So literally, like it's not a get rich quick scheme. This is right. not something that you're just going to wake up one day and there's a million in your account. Like set your expectations. Know what it is you're doing. Number two, I would say, um, why are you doing it? What is your reason for doing it? What is your motivation? Um, is it just to make money? Is it because you really need to do it? Or is it because you enjoy doing it? Is it going to be a hobby or is it going to be a business? Why are you doing it? So that would be number two. I think number three would be um, don't fear failure. Like, you are going to fail at it. <laughs> like, that is just it. Like, there are going to be obstacles. Like, there are going to be situations where you actually cannot um, 
continue with the channel, you're going to have to start a new channel or YouTube decides mm, we would just want to demonetize your channel for no reason. Then they're going to demonetize it. Just continue. Like, don't, do not fear failure because the minute you start getting the whole fear element in your head, it doesn't come out. It takes a lot of motivation for it to get out, a lot of work to get out. So like, don't fear that. Continue motivating yourself and, and remember why you are doing it, All right? Those two go like literally hand in hand. Number four, I would say invest in yourself, invest in courses, invest in coaches, invest in people that are actually willing to um, get you from, from point A to point B, people that will be able to see um, that, okay, this person want to make something on YouTube, let's help him. You know what I mean? Invest in yourself, make, like, make the monetary decision to actually go out there and pay for a course, make the monetary decision to go out there and pay for a, um, a coach of some sort. I mean, we all have to do it. We all have to do it at some point because you don't get taught these things at school. Yes. Um, so yes. you got to learn somewhere how to do these things and it doesn't just automatically come. You got to invest in it, right? Um, and number three, just do it. Well, I don't overthink it. Five. Just, ah, number five. I mean, number five. Sorry. Number five. Just do it. Don't overthink it. Just do it. And when it fails, just do it again. Just do it. Continue doing it. And okay. that's it. Those are the five okay. tips. Okay. Those are the five things that I live by when it comes to that. And, and, I, and I like number five because, you know, I think a lot of times, uh, you know, the other day someone reached out to me and they want to get into networking and, the person asked me for a couple of books and they want to read the books. And, and I said, you know what? I can send you so many books. But at the end of the day, the best way to learn is to actually just do it. Because when you do it, you learn better as an insider than you will learn as an outsider looking in. Okay? Uh, you know, when, we, when, when I was opening uh, fast food franchises years ago, you know, we went and we interviewed several uh, fast food franchise owners within the franchise that we were starting. And we asked them what it was it like to run the business because we wanted to know whether we're making the right decision. But nothing could have prepared us for what was to come when we actually owned it, uh, you know, when we actually owned the franchise. Okay. So, you know, it's, it's very, very important for people to realize that you just got to, you just got to start and you just got to do it. So, guys, uh, I think, uh, you know, that's the end of the interview. I will do a follow-up meeting with Danica. Uh, you know, this was valuable information. Uh, and when we do the next one, it's going to be more practical, showing you maybe how to open a YouTube channel. Danica, I want to thank you for coming on. Guys, you are watching the 9 to 5 Millionaire, or you are watching Aslam the Toy uh, on my YouTube channel or on one of my social channels. Uh, I'll see you soon. God bless. And uh, have an awesome week and an awesome 2020. Cheers, everyone. Bye, guys.